Hi guys, we love you. Now, as we know, um, the Patrick and the Kelsey and the Kenny case, um, this is all going to trial. And as you all know, or don't know, it has been upgraded to eight counts. And that is one of them is first degree murder, which if he is found guilty of this, will serve life without parole. And there's a first degree felony too. Um, that's 16 years to 42 years on that count alone. So there's a few years there. First degree robbery, uh, where somebody dies in a robbery. Somebody comes into your home unwelcomed, forces their way in, and ends in a death. And of course, there's some counts on solicitation uh, that he asked KK to commit these murders. And there are... Um, a class 3 felony which carries 4 to 12 years and that is for tampering with evidence tampering with a body removal of a body from a property or from one place to another um, those are the counts and 8 counts all together now he might get um, found not guilty he may get found guilty of first degree murder life without parole but a jury has a few options here um, and which one are they going to believe which one are they going to believe and who are they going to believe now his attorneys haven't spoken out. They are preparing the case for trial. Patrick will be arraigned on the 8th of April. And we'll go from there. Um, given the evidence and, and maybe we'll know when the next um, court date will be. And this case could take anywhere up to six months to a year, depending if there's no delays or setbacks. So this is going to be six months to a year trial. And we'll see where that goes. So we are going to have to be patient on this one. Seemingly things are moving slow or not really slow. There are some cases that are in the courts and dealt with. But this one's a bit complicated, isn't it? Because now we don't even know what the full truth is here because of so many stories being told. And the stories that have been told are from KK. Um, the reason why Patrick is in jail still without bond is because of KK and Kenny that is and the nurse from Idaho now we all know most of us know that's following this case her stories are just too out there yep she said that they got together and planned this murder ways to get rid of a person they no longer want in their life now who is really telling this story who is coming up with these ideas well number one KK did say that she was the one telling Patrick how to murder a person coming up with the ideas hmm she did state that 
So that leads me to believe that she was definitely the one speaking of how to get rid of a person, like putting medication in a drink, putting poison in a drink. Um, where was she going to get this poison from and what kind of medication was she going to put in a coffee and drug somebody? Whether it be drugging them to knock them out, put them to sleep, or slowly kill you within a day or two. I don't know what kind of drug she was going to use. And she didn't elaborate on what drug she was actually going to be using. But she turns out, she says, that she never put nothing in the coffee. But the thing is... She made several attempts and several trips down from Idaho to Colorado Woodland Park to carry out these acts. And two times, two of these times, she said she nearly did it. She nearly did it and she backed out right at the last minute. Now, uh, backed out at the last minute. You came all the way from Idaho, at least seven to eight hundred miles away, leaving your children with your ex-husband, who you apparently still live with. Um, that doesn't make no sense, living with your ex-husband and having a boyfriend and all that. But each to their own, I guess, whatever works out. Um... In my opinion, maybe your husband might have been next. Mm -hmm. Get rid of that one and then get rid of the other one. That's just my opinion. <laughs> Allege. Just saying. That's my thoughts. That you never know. With this crazy woman and her thoughts of how to come up to commit murder. And how to get away with it. Now, KK, um, as far as I've heard uh, these facts and, and the rumors and friends and people that know her um, and all involved in the case, um, first of all, when approached, she didn't even really know Patrick. She kind of played dumb on that one. Who? Patrick who? No, I don't think I know him. Kind of thing. You know what I mean, guys? Oh, who is he? Uh, you know, she's acting like she don't know who this person is. And she sh certainly hasn't been to Colorado visiting this person. This is how she was kind of lying. That's one of her lies. Now... We all know, and people do know, that she knew this person. But she kind of first denied it. Um, first off, if you know a person, even though she was involved with this, but they didn't know at this time if she was or not, why right out the bat come out with a lie that you don't know this person? Why don't you just say, yeah, I know him, you know, we were in the rodeo. How are you going to lie about that when they knew you are in high school, you dated him, it was your first love, you did the rodeo, you were the rodeo queen. Now, you know all that's going to come out, right? So, why deny you know him? Okay, that's one big fat lie right off the bat. Now... Um, we'll go into the whys, the why, the big why is, why did Patrick want Kelsey gone? That's the big question. 
why. Now, some say it's custody. He wanted full custody. Um, that's one of his reasons. Maybe, maybe not. He tells people that he has full custody and that Kelsey is a bad mother and abuses her, his daughter and he has proof something to do with there's supposed to be a doctor's note, a report or something like that that's floating around. I don't know if that's actually in evidence because the DA also says there's no evidence that Kelsey was a bad mother and on drugs or any kind of abuse so I'll just leave that one open right now because they are just claims and that is what he has told people or maybe has told his um, the, his lawyer or something and that was something that was leaked that he has proof that his baby had bruises on her body like I said she's a little baby that is learning to walk is not stable on her feet they tumble they fall into furniture they knock their arms kids get little bruises all over they even you know if they land on the table hit their tooth they cut their lip you know little things like that you can't protect little babies from crawling and walking all over the place you you try to watch you have to watch every move but you can't watch every second so okay she had bruises but okay did she have broken bones did she constantly you know afraid of things no that has not been proven yet so we'll just push that one to the side the abuse of her little baby and didn't want her baby she was going to take off um, that doesn't seem to be true at this time. Now, we all know, number one, a killer to a partner, a spouse, a husband, is that are in a love triangle. Now, we don't really know what's true here. It's obviously... I think Kelsey was not in a relationship with Patrick. I think that ended um, a while back. But they have to have a relationship because they both are taking care of their little baby girl. So, okay, that's normal. If you can work it out, if you can work it out, and we don't really know where the trouble is yet did he not like the routine did he not like having to come back and forth picking the child up and did she not like keep going dropping the kid off but I don't know if she ever did drop the kid off I don't know yet but anyway if that works for some that's fine it works for some but when you've got a girlfriend in the middle of all this I've seen it time after time. You know, there's one of them that will don't like it, and they will cause problems verbally, mentally, um, have hate for this person. And number one is jealousy. Jealousy of the other woman is often a killer. It's the cause of hate. They hate the person. If you're jealous of somebody, jealous of what relationship they have, and they will always be tied together because of a child. Well, isn't she living with her ex-husband? And they have children together? Um, well, if somebody got into her business and said, hey, what, you know, she say, mind your own business. Well, then she should do the same. Mind your own business. Um, apparently, maybe this is the rumors and maybe a fact, really. 
um, that KK got divorced from her husband because she wanted Patrick. Because she's kind of been in his life for a long time. She's never severed ties to this man um, with a love relationship. Loving him, liking him, will do anything for him kind of thing. Or is she the stalker? She wouldn't leave him alone. You know, we really don't know the true facts yet. I don't care what she says. That's my opinion. I don't care what she says. She's unreliable and unbelievable. Now, she cried wolf too many times. And now, people don't believe her. People don't believe. Maybe 50-50. <laughs> Probably less than that, actually. Maybe one thing she said might have been right. But we can't prove that she is telling the whole truth. But the DA says they have kind of backed her up and made her a deal because they believe what she said. So this might indicate that um, she, she had to have proven to them that she's telling the truth somewhere along the line. I don't know where. It seems like she wasn't the one telling the truth. It's the people around her coming out and telling the truth. If it wasn't for her friends, if it wasn't for them lawyers, those attorneys, if it wasn't for people telling her employer, um, um, a friend in Colorado. So it seems like it wasn't really her stepping out telling the truth. It was her friends and people that she had talked to about Patrick. She's the one that told them. And they're the ones that came forth and told somebody else. So, really, if it wasn't for them, she would never, never told what she has already told or it would have came out much later so she wasn't the one coming and telling them the truth she was what you call it what would you call it a person not coming forth they are um, I can't think of the word right now but they are people that you have to um, subpoena them in um, you have to really force their hand you know to speak up and tell the truth so we talked about she left her husband she divorced her husband seems like well first of all I don't think she divorced her husband I'm thinking he divorced her because he probably knew about Patrick and their relationship and forced her hand and she wouldn't let go of him so he decided to divorce her and but the thing is they still live together <laughs> because she probably said, said told him some sad story and she has told him lots of lies too. He's he's been told lies too. And he is finding out that she's still one big fat liar. And I don't know what the situation is right now. Maybe he's the kind of man that's still in love with her. But divorced her. But can't let her go neither. Because one thing is... To get on with your life, you gotta let go. You you don't have them back in the house. Uh, you might as well be married, right? So I don't understand their relationship, and who knows what's going on there? What's in their heads? But I do think that she lies to her husband because she knows that she can. Now, 
what is the truth? What do you guys think's the truth? Let's have your thoughts and a discussion about what do you think is true is true about any of her statements that she's made and accused Patrick of this heinous crime and how he went about doing it. Now, um, because Patrick's not the one that went seven, eight hundred miles to keep seeing her. Now, we don't know how many times he went up to Idaho to visit her and hang out and go to an, a, a, a hotel or things like that. But she's been to Colorado plenty of times. So is this a one-way street here? One way? She did all the chasing. She's the one that went out of her way. She's the one that's obsessive. Jealous. Yeah. Now, it's beginning to look like that to me. And probably it's looking like that to a lot of people. Yep. Yeah. She's the one that's going to be in control. She's the one that's got the jealousy and hate. At this time. That's my opinion and that's how it looks to me. And that's how it looks to a lot of people. That have been in this situation. Where their husband or wife cheats. And they end up looking like the bad guy. Now. On the day. On Thanksgiving Day. When Kelsey was seen at the um, the store with her baby, going to get a few things. Um, obviously, she needed a few things on Thanksgiving Day, otherwise she wouldn't have been at the store. But she was seen on camera going in. I I haven't seen a video of her coming out of the store, but we all know she did. I've only seen the video of her going in. And she was alone. And then Patrick was seen at a Walmart. At the Walmart. And apparently it's not very far from where she was. And then... I don't know, about 124 or 1 something, Kelsey was seen near her home. And this was surveillance from the homes around the neighborhood. So, and then Patrick was seen about 3.30ish, something like that. And, you know, picking his child up. Um, or I'm not sure if that's the second time he came back because that's a little confusing to me I don't know absolutely which part of this is accurate right but anyway he comes to pick his daughter up and his words were that he exchanged see this is where it all started from at the beginning that when it first came out and this Kelsey was missing that he said he went there to exchange and pick up his child but on the other hand they were saying that it was the fiance now that's when it started like what that don't make sense the fiance and you're picking your kid up you are exchanging well that didn't sound like somebody was in a relationship right off the bat and I said that in my first videos that didn't make sense it don't sound like they're together and there's no plans of you being together that day Thanksgiving day uh, obviously if you are together you will be going staying at home or you all go to family friends together if you were together so but we all know that they are not together and we're together for quite a while as fiance or in a relationship so he was seen now 
they're saying that well we've looked at the home and we see a door there's a door there's a door at the front or the side of the house there's no door at the back of the house there's no um there's no door at the back of the home now kk mentioned something about the backyard the back of the home well didn't she say she went there or did something at the back of the home i don't know i can't remember quite what what was said there and then he's exchanging his kid in the alley you know the alley the side of the home oh yeah okay well there probably is no camera right there there's probably no camera at the side of the door so nobody could see if um he let himself in with the keys cuz he did have the keys he had somebody had the keys either kk had them or patrick had them now if you're going to commit murder i don't think you will knock on the door you let yourself in quietly and sneak up on that person and before they turn around they say hey what you doing how did you get in here now if they're not together why is he still got a set of keys to her home did she trust him still to hey you can have the keys to my home and come in anytime oh yeah did she really or did he not she kept on asking him for the keys and he wouldn't give them back he kept on saying yeah 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 i'll give them back to you or yeah okay i forgot i left them at the house you know making excuses not to give the keys back yeah i don't know how trusting kelsey was but i would have changed the locks on my doors that would have been the least thing that i would have done to make sure nobody can get in my house without bashing the door in but apparently well i'm saying apparently she didn't change the locks i did not hear nothing about her changing the locks to her home could she have done that no i doubt it i doubt it very much but as kk got in her home and she had keys to get in her home somebody gave her those keys or maybe the door wasn't locked the door wasn't locked in the first place after patrick left or kk left that home because right now i don't even know who was at that house at that time or exactly when the murder or when kelsey went missing from her home we don't even know if it exactly was on the 22nd because there was phone calls made and the phones pinged and patrick and kk were talking now she was coming down to colorado so it might have happened later on cuz we don't know really when she was murdered and taken out of that home exactly at this time unless they have footage of this happening like what i'm saying is um did surveillance see somebody moving stuff into a truck did they see uh a suitcase or a tote of some thing being loaded into a truck cuz you got to remember there is some um, Kelsey's got two vehicles parked in her driveway now if another vehicle was coming down you are going to either back it up back it into the property or you're going to drive straight forward i'm not sure which way the vehicle was parked but then somehow you've got to take that body out of that house 
now there's two vehicles parked there so that would be pretty easy to do, wouldn't it? Without being seen. Probably. Um, I don't know. Neighbors not in because it's Thanksgiving. They've gone away for the weekend. You know, like some people do. I don't know about that one. So what's your thoughts about how the body got out? And do they have surveillance seeing movement some kind of dragon loading something into a truck and another thing how does one get a big tote of some kind into a truck because that would be hard to do how big was it we we'll just talk about, um, there were some texts and phone calls, communications between KK and Patrick. And why were these communications um, being done at certain times, at a crime scene? A crime that was just about to happen. They were communicating with each other. All the time. They even had. Throwaway phones. Now this was. And sounds like. The planning. Of a murder. And that is my opinion, and we can have a little discussion on um, your thoughts and how it went down. And the real reasons why we think it went down the way it did. And who's to blame? Who really initiated this plan? That happened months before Kelsey disappeared. And has never been seen or heard of since the 22nd of November 2018. Now, one theory is to throw the police off to throw the police off if ever they were to come and be questioned hmm really okay number one plan to throw the police off but you see there's always one mistake that leads to you and this one person that made all these mistakes is KK. Um, she's the one with the, all the ideas. And she's the one with um, a gun in the car. She's the one with a metal rod of some kind on her possession. She's the one. With the coffee, she's the one. With the poison, the drugs. Apparently, uh, this is her saying this. This is her own words, her own statement. And she's the one with the bat. Hmm. It's not in the hands of Patrick, is it? It's all in the hands of her. She got the tools. She got the bat, she got the metal rod from Patrick, so she says. And she did take the metal pole or whatever it was, um, iron pole, 
maybe a, a fire poker, you know, that you keep next to the fireplace. They're really heavy. I mean, who'd want to get a hit on the head with that? Nobody. But all these materials were used are only in her hands at this time. Yes, guys. What do you think about that? She's not even saying these materials, these devices are in Patrick's own hands. They are in her hands in the vehicles she was driving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how I see it. I don't know how the law enforcement detectives DA saw it, but I think they could have done more. They could have held back. But you know, they didn't want Patrick to get out of jail for free at this time because it is hard to get a person back into jail once you have let them out without some real hard evidence. Now, was it a rush to judgment to give her such a deal with the devil? That's what I'm saying. A deal with the devil. She is more involved than a phone pinging in Idaho. She is more involved than having a set of keys to the house. She's left a trail. And so far, in my eyes, the trail leads back to her at this time. Um, not saying that he's not involved, but all this evidence... Is only in her hands right now. How did the police, the detectives, come up with a sweet deal? How to get away with murder? How to get away with a disappearance of a mother? Never to be seen till this day. Still. Of course, you lawyer up. You lawyer up, and she got herself a good lawyer. How good is she? She got her off with a slap on the hand. And now... I don't know how the system works. She is pleaded guilty to all charges that she was charged on. She has to fully um, follow their directions. And she will not be sentenced until the, this case is over and done. And but. Is there the but? I like to know. Is there a but? Mm-hmm. Well, if she talks about this case, if she does anything to jeopardize this case, the deal is off. And can she be charged with something else? I'd like to know that question. Did they charge her on certain counts but not on others? Can she be charged on a different charge I'm going to wait for that one because I can't wait to see what Patrick's um, case is going to be I can't wait for him to come up with his side of the story whether it's true or not but I can't wait to hear his side of it and what his attorney's going to um, elaborate on and how this is going to go down because we only have her word right now. First one to talk, first one to walk. That's the motto. Can she be charged in another state? Can she be charged with taking evidence over state lines? 
We don't know if she can be charged with anything that once you cross the state lines. Maybe they have something up their sleeve. We'll have to wait and see. Because, you know, the FBI, the CBI have been doing the interviews. Um, Idaho investigators were helping out. I don't know how much they are involved in this, how much investigating they did. Um, but they sure did collect phones and got started the um, getting into their phone records, subpoenaing the uh, company. Uh, they got onto that. Um, and of course, by this time, friends had told, um, at least one friend had told the, um, the employee, employee, um, er, and also told the attorneys that they were working for had, told them about the story KK had given her and she was really worried and what shall I do? What shall I do? So she was debating so she thought the wise thing to do was tell her employer which were attorneys mm -hmm. a law firm and in return what did they do? Well they came on and did a TV um, interview um, and they just told the friend to say tell her to come in and talk to us and left it at that until the news broke that this lady was missing from Colorado and that they knew some of the story and that's the only time they came forward um So, that's how that kind of ended and started right there and then. Now, we all know that KK denies having anything to do with Patrick. At first, she denied, denied, denied. But the thing is, she opened her mouth too many times. And what was her story? Leaving a trail? Was she leaving a trail? I'm afraid of him. I'm desperately scared of him. No, she came up that story. She had to come up with a plan. And she had that plan. She certainly did because I didn't hear of any of her friends saying, um... Okay, she's going out with this guy. She said she was seeing this guy, which she said, and that she was desperately afraid of him. When she first when she first told her friends that she was seeing this guy in Colorado, I didn't hear them saying she was desperately afraid of him at that time and them telling her, oh, stay away from him. He's a dangerous man. You don't want to get involved with him. No, this only started coming out when the when Kelsey disappeared. So, KK starts to tell her story. This is when she starts to tell her long, long story of the planning of a murder. Yeah. And there's so many stories to this case. She has made up lots of different stories. Are they true? They certainly are not making sense. They are not making total sense to a lot of us. Now, one story could be possible, but my God, she's made up so many different scenarios, okay? It could have happened this way. It could have happened that way. It was going to happen this way, and so on and so on. So this KK had already met Frazee when she was in high school, it was her first love, and she was in love with him. Yes, she was. 
and I think she probably was always in love with him. But he didn't really have eyes for her, because they drifted apart. But in her eyes, I think that's my opinion, that she was always in love with him and never fell out of love with him. Whatever this man has, she wanted. But she also carried on with her life and had babies and got married and divorced. And when she got divorced, it was because of this man too, Pedrick. So it's all connected. It's all connected. So when she was planning on divorcing her husband, along come Kelsey and messed up all her plans. Because by accident, he got her pregnant. <laughs> by accident. Well, you know how that turns out. Uh, accident or not. He should have been paying attention to, shouldn't he? He should have been wearing the protection as well as Kelsey. But that's not how it turned out. She got pregnant and had a baby. Now, it doesn't matter what story, it, how it happened. Were they together? Were they not together? They were obviously together at some point. Now, there was a turning point when Kelsey thought this guy is not long term. It's not for her. She don't like the way he lives. She doesn't like his lifestyle. That might not be because he's a rancher. It might be other reasons. She may have known he was a cheater. He's seeing somebody. We don't know how much she knew at this time. All we know is that she ended the relationship in her personal as boyfriend and girlfriend fiance whatever the case may be it was just their personal they had a child together and that seems to be the only relationship they have or ties and maybe you know she wanted to keep maybe she didn't want the father out of her kid's life but they needed order you can't just come to one's house and decide to pick up your kid whenever you feel like it that doesn't work that way for anybody. Um, so they arrange to have the kid when she's working. He, uh, you know, whatever the reason is. Obviously, he had her when she was working. Um, I don't know of any babysitter, a babysitter, other than Patrick, you know, taking care of his own child. Did she have a backup did she have a child minder and if so who is she and how often did she babysit now her job has probably stated when Kelsey worked when her days off were what hour she worked at what time and so forth they know the information already so we don't know but they sure do know that the DA and his lawyers certainly know what was her schedule and how many hours a week she worked and how reliable she was and what drugs um, testing she had done for, from her job is required to do so as a pilot. You have to have um, a test done, a drug test done, randomly. I don't know. Um, she probably had had them done. They probably have the proof of that. Because as we know, Patrick said she was on drugs in rehab. You know, those are the stories. She's a drunk. She drinks and she takes drugs. And she is depressed and been to the doctor for her depression now we don't know if she had been to the doctor for depression and was taking any depression pills we don't know that only her job and evidence will prove that and they are not reporting on that at this time but you know now KK's story starts with You know, she comes up with saying that she doesn't know. So, 
she starts off saying she doesn't know him at first and then the story about the horse came up then uh, she only knows him because she was going to buy a horse from him uh, was he a horse breeder or something uh, he had horses for sale he trained dogs you know that's the story he, he trains dogs and does cattle and does donkeys you know who's and and works for other people now he has a horse for sale <laughs> yeehaw mm-hmm and then another story yeah well I knew him in high school at the end of high school during high school at the end of high school and he was my first love so we went from not knowing him at all to her first love <laughs> okay so how do we expect to um, believe a word she comes out of her mouth because she has a different story every time you call you turn a corner now the car now I did say this in a video many videos before this one about her driving her friend's car from Colorado I mean from Idaho to Colorado and back well that apparently is true but also <laughs> she used um, I don't know if she used that car while she was in Colorado or got into her aunt's or cousin's car. Now, she's off, she's in another vehicle, it sounds like it. Uh, one time when she went to uh, Kelsey's home. But that could be the same car as uh, her friend's car from Colorado. And this one had expired plates on it. Now, if you really don't want to get caught or seen or get picked up by the police for any reason, if you really don't want to know that you've been in Colorado, well, hello, just drive your friend's cars that got expired plates. Yeah, why don't you do that? Okay, that one is a bit unbelievable, but she states that happened. Now, this must be the friend's car with the loaded gun in it. Now, the gun. Her friend says that the, the gun was returned in a different state than it was left in the car, in the vehicle. Now, did her friend mean to leave that gun in the car or was it a boo-boo on her part? She already let her use the car. Uh, why did she ask her, why, why don't you use your own car? Why do you want to use mine with expired plates? Why? Well, we'd like to know that. We'd like to know why. It's just a question. That's all I'm saying. It's just a question. Um, and then... You know, KK comes up with the story about the coffee. Who goes to a, a neighbor's home and makes up a story about, I'm a new neighbor, I'm new to the neighborhood, or thanks for returning my dog, or, you know, I don't know which order it was in, but, uh, and gives Kelsey her favorite coffee. Now, is that one in a million or what that she would know which coffee is her favorite? <laughs> nope. Uh, I don't know who would know that. Patrick, maybe? Mm-hmm. Okay, so at one time, they discussed what's her favorite coffee. But anyway, who takes a coffee from a complete stranger I don't care if you say she lived down the road she's your new neighbor she's giving you a gift of a cup of coffee um forget the coffee um 
and we don't know if she put drugs in this coffee or whether she didn't now of course it continues with the pole um, and the baseball bat and then of course comes the fire pit the burning of the tote and putting it in a trough and covering it with hay and setting fire to it with uh, a gas can that was filled up at the gas station um, not far from Kelsey's home and the tote was put in a barn on a shelf and then was brought down by a tractor a some forklift tractor thing and and that was used to um, bring the tote down but she also states she doesn't know if there was a body in it how about that guys she knows everything else but now she's not admitting to actually seeing the body but she thought she sees something sticking out of it though what could that be an arm a leg oh my god her story gets worse and worse and worse if you ask me and then her purse her id and other things were thrown into the trough amongst the fire and also she states the flames were getting really high and she was worried about Patrick's mother uh, coming out and wanting to know what was going on. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. So at one point I thought that this was not near the home. I don't know how far away. I didn't even think it was on the same property that this happened. But then she kind of states that. So what does that say? She puts herself on the property, the Frise's property. And we don't even know if that's true. And then she says she returned the uh, pole, the iron pole, and left it at the gate. What gate? The gate to the entrance right off the road? Um, yeah, that's where she left it. And then it ended back into F Patrick's hands. Yep. That's kind of how that story's going. Now we come into the home. Where there is apparently blood in the home. Right. This is because KK was telling the detectives that she was to clean up the blood. Apparently, he was outside Kelsey's home and he came to the home. Apparently, sitting outside the home and talking to her. This is where the pings were going and they, they were both talking to each other at the same time. So when... Uh, Patrick was located, his ping was near Kelsey's home, and her ping was in Idaho, apparently. And the blood. Now, detectives got some blood from a bathroom and other places. And there was an unknown male blood, an unknown woman's blood. And, of course, maybe Kelsey's blood, but I don't think I've heard of it was um, her blood. Was it her blood in there at s somewhere? But apparently it was not Patrick's blood. The male blood was not Patrick's blood. So... That part is an if right now, whose blood it is. But they're saying it's not Patrick's blood. But I'm not sure if that is absolute the truth. Or, um, well, I just don't know if that was true or not. Or they're just not elaborating on that. And they're keeping that in evidence. But, now... 
if that is not Patrick's blood, just say it's not his blood. Because apparently he's the one that beat Kelsey to death with the baseball bat. Which I find a little bit odd for a man of his strength to want to beat a woman to death with a baseball bat and chase her around the home. Because there seems to be too much blood around the home um, for somebody getting beaten. Um, if you're getting beaten upstairs, it's upstairs. If you're getting beaten up downstairs, the blood stays downstairs. Unless you've got a chase on your hands. Now, this is just my opinion, but I'm just giving a sample. A sample here. Like, if Patrick was to go kill Kelsey, he would strangle her. He would choke the life out of her. He has the strength. All he has to do is go up behind her. This business about putting a, a jacket, a sweater around her head to smell candles. That sounds like woman talk to me. Woman's talk. I mean, and then beat her with a bat. And beat her to a pulp. And splatter blood everywhere. No. You might as well just got a gun and shot her in the head. I'm just saying. No. He's a man. He just he could have just went behind her. And got her by the neck. And choked the life out of her. Um, I, I'm just saying. That just sounds a little off to me. And then the tooth. Now where did this tooth come from? Okay now. The tooth. How does one know that a tooth went flying and it went into the uh, vents or ended up in the vents or something like that? Somebody was looking for a tooth. Now, how do you know there was tooth flying out and it went into the vents? Did you look? Did you look to see she had all her teeth in her mouth? If you're in a frenzy and you are fighting somebody, a fight to the death, I don't know if you know where the teeth went. You would just clean up. Unless you're going to open the vents and get inside there and vacuum that out. Which, I don't know what happened about the teeth. A tooth, the teeth. Now, that is getting a little bit... I'm thinking, this is my scenario, that... As we know, KK, don't tell the truth. We don't know what the truth is as a ledge. And... We don't know exactly what the truth is because her stories are, are up and down. Now, if this was a woman beating another woman, yep, she could have been chasing her around a little bit and she could have just beaten her to the pole because this is coming from somebody that is jealous and has hate and wants this person out of her way, out of their life. And you can just choke a person to death. Now, we're going to weigh up Patrick, a beater to death, and make a messy scene. Or it's KK beating her to death and made a messy scene. And this is why Patrick told her to come and clean up the mess. Because he's telling her, what the hell? What kind of mess have you done in that home? You need to get here and clean up your mess. Could that be the story? Could that... How it went down? Plausible. Could be. Clean up the scene. I just don't understand why he couldn't just choke her. I'm not saying he'd go out and kill her, but... This has already happened, and we want to know scenarios how this could have went down. Now, I would say he could choke the life out of her rather than beat her with a bat. And make a mess. They are trying to get away with murder, you know. They are trying to get away with murder. And, you know, if it wasn't for this KK, I don't think Patrick would be sitting in jail where he is right now. Do you guys? Do you really think he'd be where he is now? Right, that comes up to the blood and, and what they found in the house. Now they know that's her first love, and then comes the ex-husband. 
And we already talked about the hus ex-husband. But, um, see, she was going to have an alibi. And her ex-husband, who she lives with in Idaho, for some God knows what apparent reason, um, is not going to give her an alibi. He don't know where she was on the 24th, the 25th, maybe the 23rd. He states he doesn't know where she was. Now I guess she thought her husband, ex-husband, whatever he is, was going to give her an alibi. But that turns out he is not getting involved in murder. Because he knows that she lied to him and she lies. Truth be known, I bet he don't believe a word that comes out of her mouth. That's just my opinion, guys. That's just my opinion. Once a liar, always a liar. If you have to lie about little things, well, then you lie about the big things. Because that don't make sense to lie about something little and then not lie about something big. I'm just saying. And he, she's not the one that filed for a divorce. It's apparently that Chad Lee filed for a divorce because she's a cheater. And he probably knew about stuff. You know, some people aren't stupid. Some people know when something's going on. Now, we'll just get onto the gun. Because apparently the gun was in the car, in the vehicle. Her friend had left in there. But the gun didn't come back in the same state it went out. And she has testified against that, or she told the uh, investigators that her gun had eight rounds in it. Eight rounds in it. I think I'm going to get this right. Eight rounds in it. But nothing in the chamber. When she gets the gun back, there's one in the chamber, six rounds, and one bullet missing. Hmm. Where does this bullet go? So does that mean that KK got a hold of the gun? Because didn't she say, KK say to about Patrick, Patrick said, or Patrick said, that he wanted to return the gun and the keys. Now, I got mixed up with that part because I was thinking he had Kelsey's gun and her house keys. But it turns out, like, it's not her gun. So that part was a little com a bit confusing. Unless there's two guns floating around here somewhere. So that's a little bit on the guns. Now, when you are in this situation, the best thing to do is shut your mouth and lawyer up. She lawyered up. She only lawyered up because... Everything was coming out because her friends were talking. Her friends were talking. And they were talking to the right authorities. But it was all a little too late. A little too late for Kelsey to be helped. Maybe she'd be with her daughter today. Enjoying her days and working at her job. Going about her business. Except... Kelsey is presumed dead and she is missing at this time. Maybe never to be found. Right now the um, FBI um, are looking, I will be going to look into the landfill. I think it's called Fountain, Fountain Landfill. And Tuesday is supposed to be when they will start looking um, for whatever they're looking for. And I hope they got lots of volunteers that know what, what the hell they're looking for. Dogs, maybe. And I don't know how long they're going to spend looking in the landfill. They're probably maybe looking into the river. 
they be looking into the river. Um, don't know what kind of lakes, rivers they have near where Kelsey and where Patrick lives. Who knows? We don't even know if um, KK took the remains, what was left. If this is true, the body was burned and and she took the rest of the remains and threw them away herself. Who's to say that didn't happen? Hmm. And that would be crossing state lines. Crossing the state lines with a dead body in your vehicle. That could have happened. That's just a scenario that could have happened. And, you know, of course she states that she is so scared, scared to death. She's scared to death of Patrick. <laughs> it's looking like Patrick was scared of KK. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me, guys. What about you? It's looking like Patrick was scared of this crazy blinking woman. This crazy ass woman. She's coming up with all the scenarios and all the ideas. And she's the one with weapons in her hand. She's the one showing up at the house. I just can't wait for, the, you know, what details come out. If Patrick owns up, if he talks. And what's his story going to be? Because they did say that Patrick was doing a lot of writing while he was in court that day. Well, KK was giving her statement and pleading her guilty plea. He asked for a pen and paper, and he was writing it all down, apparently writing it all down. Um, is this because he couldn't believe his ears? Couldn't believe his eyes? Because if he knows the story, right? If he really, truly, truly knows the story, why is he? why did he have to write it down? Answer me that one. It may be because he's trying to act the part. Like he don't know what the hell she's talking about. What the hell is he talking about? Or he really don't know what the hell she's talking about. You know what I mean, guys? There's two scenarios. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you think he really knew? What the hell? Because... You know, his lawyers are in there listening to her talk and listening to her statements and what she's pleading guilty to. And he's writing this all down. Does he want to get his story right? He wants to get his story right. And these stories are going to be reversed. Now, he may well be the one that was played. Yes. Um, could be, I'm just saying, could be, and that's just my opinion, we doubt it, but you never know, I mean, a man can complain about, oh, she wants to take me to court for child support, she wants full custody, I want full custody, I want half and half, you know, you could have disputes about that, and he could have been just complaining, 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 well, and KK just had enough of his bitching. She didn't want to listen to it anymore. Just put it into it. I got some ideas. We'll get away with it. You know. So, because Patrick's neighbors have been talking. The drones were out. The video surveillance was out before they raided Patrick and Mama, old Mama, Frazee's property, the ranch. You want to call it the ranch? Um, apparently, that video surveillance was already in place. And they were watching his move. They were probably watching everywhere he goes. They were probably uh, tracking his phone. And to see what conversation he had with who and when. So, sounds like that uh, Patrick and KK were having a lot of talking on the phone about 
whatever at certain times. Um, there's another part. I just can't understand, you know, all the blood. And could it have been done a bit cleaner? Was there all that blood that they state, that she states was? And also, she said, Patrick said, there's a mess to clean up. Get here now and bring the PPE stuff, the equipment, you know, your gloves, plenty of gloves, plenty of bleach. Why did he have to tell her to bring that? When he planning the murder, he could have went out and got it himself. But anyway, and then one thing is, you don't stop and shop and be in the same area that a person's gone missing. You don't shop in those areas. You get the hell out of Dodge. No pun meant. You might end up in Dodge anyway. You might end up in Dodge. Anyway. So. I don't understand all the blood. There may not have been. A lot of blood. Look, there was blood. But the amount of blood in the cleanup that she said she did. <laughs> and took her four hours. Nah. It would have took her a long time. To clean up all that mess she said it was horrific scene that would have took her a lot more than four hours to clean up that mess so maybe I'm thinking there wasn't as much mess to clean up and some of that blood may have been there a long time um, some of it might have just been made the one in the kitchen yeah, there's some blood there. But that could have been from a gunshot wound to the head and it splattered. I don't know. Because there is a bullet missing from the gun. The gun could have been muffled. And that's why the shirt was around her head. Because it muffled the sound of the gunshot and that's just my opinion guys that's just my opinion alleged and when I said you can grab somebody behind them and strangle them to death choke them to death break their neck okay that's all I'm saying guys so there is a little bit more information coming out there, trickling out, trickling out. But we may not hear a lot more until... Um, this is just a refresher. Refresh our minds, get it all on one video um, of the events leading up to this court case. And the next court case is April the 8th, 8.30. So we got a little while to wait for the arraignment and to know what he is pleading to. And my guess, he's not going to make a plea. He's not going to plead out on this. He's going to take it to trial. Because he's going to plead not guilty. Stranger things have happened. We don't know what his plea is going to be but right now they only have KK's word that he did these things now like I said all the materials used for all these solicitations she was the one that was at the house she was the one doing this and driving somebody else's car hiding um, making up stuff and had all the uh, accessories you know for murder coffee Iron, baseball bat, poison, you know, sed sedatives. Um, she's the one that come up with the cleaning solutions, the PPE, um, all that. She's the only one. Yeah. So, alleged, and Patrick is um, innocent 
and two proven guilty and she has pled out guilty for the crime she committed with the phone and that's a sick um, a felony six and she will get zero to three years for that when it all said and done unless they can get her for something else they can charge her on a separate charge when all is said and done let's see if they can do that oh yeah mm-hmm let's see guys if that happens so um, let's have a discussion and your thoughts and thank you for stopping by and don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel and I do appreciate this and thank you once again